my man, Constantine. Yeah. I feel like I am a ground floor <laughs> investor in this film. I've yeah. been screaming that it's good for close to 20 years now. I'm curious from your perspective why you think it's taken so long for culture to realize that. You know, I don't know. Look, every job I do, I fall in love with something about it, whether it's the, the, the character, the story, the world, ideally all of it. I loved it. I loved making it. I was passionate about it. And, you know, we did okay financially. Um, you know, it was different sort of financial models well, then. You like confirm, we, did, we did. Was it 70 mil or what? 100 mil? Because I think that what? That the makes making? The, the budget? Yeah. The budget was 96 million. Because you guys made 230. That's pretty good. No, it's pretty good. And that was at a time, too, where ancillary markets, like, you typically doubled your box office. Like, we made right. money. It, was, it wasn't bad. You know, it's not like a, you know, a grand slam by any means. But we, we did okay. But we got, you know, harshed on by the critics. And But what, what I found was over the years, you know, and then when I go out on tour with I Am Legend or something and everybody's got Constantine DVDs and the, my next movie, Constantine DVDs, and then Hunger Games, Constantine DVDs, <laughs> and then there's like Rotten Tomatoes has these, you know, articles on the movies that Rotten Tomatoes got wrong and Constantine's on there going like, oh, no, this is a gem. People harshed on it, you know, inappropriately. And I don't really know why. I think part of it is I think the world – turned around on its opinion of Keanu. And I think Keanu mm -hmm. went from somebody that people didn't really respect for a while to being one of the beloved. most beloved you know, actors around. Um, and deservingly so, he's a fantastic guy. So I, I honestly can't say why. I, it's great that people love it um, and that the fan base seems to have grown and it's gotten this kind of almost like kind of culty like quality to it now. It's a hell of a lot better of a feeling now than it was when it came out. I'll tell you that. Um, and we're trying to make the sequel. There's been a lot of hurdles. Yeah, so I, I, yeah there's just been a lot of hurdles. The, the sort of control of those kind of dark DC characters, Vertigo characters, has bounced around, and we've tried to sort of gain control. We finally have, and Keanu and I and Akiva Goldsman, who did the movie together originally, are batting around ideas, and uh, we got sort of halted by the strike. Um, but we are actively coming up with ideas to make a part two and a very rated R part two. Now, is that a conversation that involves James and Peter at DC Films? I mean, it has because they're part of, you know, people that have controlled the rights. But really, this is a project that Akiva, Keanu, and I are doing. And now here's what Constantine, particularly a sequel, particularly in this genre, has going for it that I'm not sure a lot of people know. The original Vertigo version of John Constantine is a outlier amongst comic book characters as he actually ages in real time. Yes. Is this an element that you are going to incorporate in this film? Uh, without spilling too much, I would say yes. My instinct is, um, as of now, the idea we have is we would not be pretending that this is, you know, it happens two weeks after the last Constantine, that this is an older version of John Constantine. And would you let Keanu keep his hair? <laughs> uh, you, you mean keep his dark hair or go make him go the long blonde? hair. Oh, uh, I don't know about, I don't know about that. I haven't thought that far ahead, but I'm certainly not making him blonde like the Constantine of the of the graphic novels. If we do you our know, Constantine, I'm I'm we're doing our Constantine. 